The cosmos is vast. Galaxies spiral, stars explode, planets form. Yet here on Earth, something extraordinary happened. Life emerged, complex and curious, and with it consciousness. We collections of atoms can think, feel, dream. This is the wonder of the mind-body problem. How does our brain give rise to experience? For centuries, philosophers and scientists have grappled with this question. It is a journey into the deepest realms of our being. Is the mind separate from the body, or is consciousness a product of brain chemistry? The answers are far from simple. Our exploration spans from ancient Greeks to modern neuroscience, from dualism to artificial intelligence. We'll encounter brilliant minds shaping our understanding. Join me as we venture into the mind-body problem, a journey to illuminate the essence of being human. Our story begins with René Descartes a 17th century philosopher who profoundly shaped Western thought. Descartes, in his quest for certainty, proposed a radical division between the mind and the body. The body, he argued, was a material machine governed by the laws of physics. The mind, however, was something entirely different, a non-physical substance, the seat of our thoughts, feelings and consciousness. This idea, known as dualism, resonated deeply. It seemed to offer a way to reconcile the spiritual and the material, the soul and the flesh. Descartes' influence was immense, laying the groundwork for centuries of philosophical and scientific debate. Yet dualism also presented a profound challenge. How could a non-physical mind interact with a physical body? This became known as the interaction problem, a conundrum that continues to vex philosophers to this day. Fast forward to the 20th and 21st centuries. Neuroscience explodes onto the scene, armed with powerful tools to probe the workings of the brain. We peer into the brain's intricate architecture, mapping its billions of neurons and trillions of connections. We uncover the electrochemical language of the brain, witnessing how signals zip along neural pathways, giving rise to thoughts, emotions and actions. This explosion of knowledge leads to the rise of physicalism, a view that stands in stark contrast to Descartes' dualism. Physicalists argue that the mind is not separate from the brain, rather it is the brain. Consciousness in this view is a product of brain activity, a complex symphony of neural firing patterns. Just as a symphony emerges from the coordinated playing of instruments, so too does consciousness arise from the intricate dance of neurons. Enter David Chalmers, a contemporary philosopher who throws a wrench into the works. Chalmers acknowledges the impressive progress of neuroscience. He agrees that we are making great strides in understanding the neural correlates of consciousness, the specific brain activity associated with subjective experiences. However, Chalmers argues that there's a deeper question that neuroscience alone cannot answer. He calls it the hard problem of consciousness. How do physical processes in the brain give rise to the subjective, qualitative experience of consciousness? How does the experience of seeing the color red, feeling the warmth of the sun, or hearing the beauty of music arise from the firing of neurons? This, Chalmers argues, is the real mystery of consciousness, a question that goes beyond the reach of current scientific methods. Section 5. Free Will, Illusion or Reality The mind-body problem also has profound implications for our understanding of free will. If our minds are simply products of our brains, and our brains are physical systems governed by the laws of nature, does this mean that our choices are predetermined? Is free will an illusion, a comforting story we tell ourselves to make sense of our lives? This question has haunted philosophers for centuries. Some argue that free will is incompatible with the deterministic universe, that if our actions are predetermined, then we cannot be truly free. Others propose compatibilist views, arguing that free will and determinism can coexist. They suggest that our choices, 
while influenced by our genes and environment, are still ultimately our own. Section 7. Eastern Echoes in the Western Mind While the mind-body problem has largely been framed within a Western philosophical tradition, Eastern philosophies offer intriguing perspectives. Buddhism, for example, challenges the very notion of a separate self. The self, Buddhists argue, is an illusion, a constantly changing process rather than a fixed entity. Consciousness, in this view, is not something possessed by a self, but rather a flowing stream of experiences. These Eastern perspectives offer a fresh way of approaching the mind-body problem, encouraging us to question our assumptions and explore alternative ways of understanding the nature of consciousness. They remind us that the Western scientific and philosophical tradition is not the only lens through which to view this ancient mystery. Section 8. The universe contemplates itself. The mind-body problem is a journey with no easy answers. It is a testament to the enduring mystery of consciousness, a mystery that continues to captivate and challenge us. As we delve deeper into the workings of the brain, we uncover more questions than answers. Yet in this pursuit, we gain a deeper appreciation for the wonder of our own existence. We are the universe contemplating itself, collections of star stuff that have evolved the ability to question our own existence. This is both humbling and awe-inspiring. The mind-body problem may never be fully solved, but in grappling with it, we engage in one of the noblest pursuits, the quest to understand ourselves and our place in the vast cosmic tapestry.